Welcome to this sample audio clip, which comes from the series entitled Multi-Hull Conversations with Jim Brown. In this recording, Jim speaks to sailor, self-boat builder, and marine entrepreneur Mike Lenneman. Mike is the owner of Multi-Marine in Venice, California, which can be found on the web at www.multimarine.com. In this segment, Mike shares some thoughts on small trimarans and some out-of-the-box thinking on how to build boats quickly. And in the full audio, he tells a whole bunch of terrific stories from his experiences as both a multi-hull sailor and boat builder. You can find out more about this historic audio conversation series with Jim Brown at www.outrigmedia.com. Hey, yep. Mike, this is Joe. Yeah. Sorry for butting in here. I just want to ask yeah. one last question of you, if I can. If you would be, sure. if you would be a prognosticator, is that the right word? <laughs> uh, and tell me what you think is in the future for multi-hulls or what you would like to be in the future for multi-hulls for the, for the guys, you know, for the average sailor, not for the mega millionaire here, but for, right. the, for, the, for the average guy who wants to get out yeah. on the water. What what do you see happening, or what do you think you would like to see happening in the future? Well, what what I would like to see happening in the future probably will not, so I'll, I'll stick to what I see happening. I don't see that the America's Cup being on multi-hulls <clears throat> will have much of an influence on the sailing world. Uh, the insiders like it. It's interesting. It might be fascinating but it's not going to impact the sailing world uh, much at all that I can see at all. But uh, certainly the cruising world has gone to multi-hulls. If you ever go down to the Caribbean and you go to some of the charter companies, they are all multi-hulls. Dock after dock after dock of nothing but multi-hulls. So that transformation has already happened. For smaller boats, I would love to see more um, small multi-hulls make it big. Now, I don't think we'll ever see the heyday of the beach cat again, like Hobie did, Trindle, Nacra. But I see there's a good potential for the smaller, trailerable uh, trimaran that you could weekend with over at the islands, cruise a little bit, because the overhead is pretty low. If you could keep the boat uh, in a dry storage area for pretty cheap or in your own driveway, uh, it's pretty cheap, and launch it easy. But what needs to happen here is those boats have got to come down in price. They've got to be made cheaper so that the average middle-class sailor can afford them. Um, you know, the F-31 was a very cool boat, but it's also over $100,000 that's not where the market is. Um, even the, uh, the proposed uh, boat that Ian wants to come up with, I think he's on the right track, but it, which is the F-22. Um, but he, he's promised it for 10 years now, and the boat's not out yet. And he, he started with a guesstimated price of $18,000 for a stripped-down boat, and I guarantee you it'll be 60000 before it's out. That's not going to work. If people have got to use modern technology to find a less expensive way to build these boats and get them out there on the market uh, in the $20,000 range, uh, and then I think uh, you'll see possibly uh, a regrowth where an average family of four could afford this thing and have a really fun time on the water. And I think as gas prices go up higher and higher, we'll see hopefully, hopefully a return to more sailing, which is not only green, but uh, uh, more mentally calming, which uh, certainly the world could use a little bit of.
<laughs> yeah, I mean that was your attempt with the uh, the L7 uh, the small trimaran that you designed to yep. to offer the world something like that, right? Yep. Yeah, but uh, people aren't building their own boats. They just right. don't not, feel that skill not level. Yet. Yep. Not yet. Yep. Yeah. Well, you ought to have so? a look at uh, all of those marples. Uh, uh, the 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 C Clipper series designed by Marples, you know, there's nothing better than those for the for the owner builder, I think. But uh, you're right, there's not a lot of action in it because the culture has changed. Yeah. And um, if uh, if indeed some manufacturer could could um, uh, imagine a way to build a, an economical weekending multi-hull, uh, I I agree, Mike. I think it would take off. Well, I I think there there is some interesting progress. We have been starting to research thermal thermal molded plastic, um, and guys are building kayaks out of the stuff now. It's still a little bit pricey. Uh, they still can't build a real big boat out of it. Although I think it was Hunter that started building some monohulls out of thermal formed plastic. Um, but I I think uh, that what really needs to happen here is a little bit more of a leap in technology. We may be relatively close to that uh, on how to stamp out a hull. I mean, you can build a kayak in an hour. <clears throat> if you could build a boat hull deck in a day, which is entirely possible, then you really have something. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> All we've got at the moment is to build your own out of wood. And um, yeah. that uh, it's not a bad way to go, but uh, people are not uh, normally w willing to uh, to commit the time. And, right. Uh, that right. that can do spirit seems to be lacking in the in the yeah. Um, yeah. in the culture generally. But still, there's a lot of people building their own airplanes and stuff like that. So, I um, talked to a friend today who's building their own airplane. It's true. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yep. Well, you know, Mike, they find I find that um and you know this is true as well, that guys are willing a lot of guys are willing to build very small wooden boats. Uh there's yeah. a lot of plans that sell for smaller boats and uh if they could just make the mindset leap to a little bit of, of a bigger boat, it's it's the same principles Maybe if they build a small boat and find out that they can do it and and learn that way and then uh, go ahead and make the leap or make the jump to building a, a small trimaran, a trailerable boat that can be used for yeah. weekending or something like that, then then you've really got something. Well, we have a great new technique for building the small boats. Our little skiff uh, kayaks that we're building, uh, everyone's now familiar with the old stitch and glue method. Right? You you cut yeah. out flat panels, you drill holes in the edges, and you stitch the boat together. Well, that seemed like too much work to us, and then you got to grind off or untwist all the wire and fill all the little holes. So we said, well, that's silly. You only have to hold the panels together until you can glass tape them. So we decided to use duct tape. And so we duct tape the panels together, glass tape the seams, peel off the duct tape, and the boat's done. We can build a kayak in an afternoon. <laughs> wow, that's that's really neat. Now that's really neat. That's just that's just so simple and so direct. And but yet it's 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 really out of the box to just think about that because it's so simple that most people don't even think about it. I know, and I proposed the idea to Chesapeake Lightcraft that sells more kayak kits than anybody in the country. And I said, you guys, what are you doing? Use duct tape. And the guy looked at me, and we were at a boat show. And I said, I'm seriously, we build the boats this way, but, you know, it's not my business. And I don't really necessarily want to do that, but I give it to you, you know. And he just blew me off. <laughs> I mean, it's still, you, it, it's still the mentality of this is the way we've always done it. This is boating, and this is the way we'll continue to do it. Right. Well, wow. the, the other real advance that's being made in small boats is uh, these uh, – uh, kits that are manufactured by uh, computer controlled cutting and yes. uh, if they're if they're well designed and re well developed before they're put on the market it really is quite simple to put them together it's it's a matter of you know insert 
tab yeah. A into slot B, and and um, yeah. and a lot of, and you can't get them wrong. You can't goof them up if they're well de- no, developed. No, and that's and that's what Chesapeake Lightcraft does, you know. But now yeah. instead of drilling all these little holes and wiring the thing together, use duct tape. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea, Mike. I'm sure. Yeah. Well, uh, we, we've done it in different ways at different times. So ha- haven't used it all together in a stitch and glue construction. But duct tape is great. Yeah. The wonderful thing about epoxy is that it does not require clamping pressure in the joint. So you can right. just get the stuff together in its you know close proximity, and you can build a boat with. That's it. right. Yeah, we we don't even clamp it. I mean, you know, you duct tape together, you reach inside, you, and you put a little putty pass, and then while the putty's still wet, this is something I learned from Jan Goujons, don't wait for epoxy to set. Once you put the putty down, go right over it and get your fiberglass tape and lay it right into the wet putty. Then sure. use regular resin, glass right over the tape, and you're done. Yeah, yeah. And it's fast, and, and so we tape the inside. Once we've taped the inside, we pull the duct tape on the outside, sand, fair a little bit, glass tape the outside, and you're, you got a boat. Yeah, 